The Knights of Face, known also as the Three Royal Knights, or the Three Musketeers of Face, or even the Three Swordsmen, are a group of purely light attributed warrior type monsters that, upon their initial release in 2005's Elemental Energy, only consisted of three cards. Jack's Knight, Queen's Knight, and King's Knight. These three monsters would be based on the face cards in a pack of playing cards. The King, the Queen, and the Jack. Eventually, as time would pass, more support would be added to the archetype, and we would also get a Joker-inspired card too. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. We see these cards first used by Yugi Moto in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters anime, first appearing in the Battle City arc, but also popping up several more times later on. They primarily served as a means to get multiple monsters to the field for the summon of Yugi's Egyptian God card. And I'll start with Queen's Knight and King's Knight, which lets me automatically summon Jack's Knight. One left. So I summon Slifer the Sky Dragon. Outside of the original series that they appeared in, these cards would also be used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal anime, being wielded by a character named Roku. However, going back to the real world, after the Knight's initial release in 2005, it would take four years for the first support for the archetype to be added, in the form of a fusion monster known as Arcana Knight Joker, which would arrive in Ancient Prophecy. Fast forward a whopping 10 more years, and only then did another new card get introduced, this time in 2018's Megatin, in the form of Arcana Extra Joker. Despite these though, this series would not become a legitimate archetype until 2021, with the release of King's Court, which added a bunch of new monsters, spells, and traps to support the archetype. What were those cards? Well, now that we know a little bit more about the archetype, let's take a look at all of them. But first, let's start with the originals. Jack's Knight. His flavor text reads, a strong master swordsman, his loyalty is to justice. His duty is to protect the weak. Ironically, while this card is the strongest of the three face cards in terms of offense and level, the playing card he's based off is actually the weakest of the three face cards in most card games. However, here's a question for you. What exactly is a Jack? Well, a Jack was originally called a Knave, which refers to a type of male servant. So, in the context of the face cards, this monster is the loyal servant of the King and the Queen. Fun fact about playing cards that you may have never noticed. Out of the four suit variants for each face card, they all have their own little quirks. For example, for the Jacks, they have two cards that face one way, while two of the other cards face another. Two also show both their eyes in their artworks, while two of them only show one eye. Also, each holds something different in their hands. For this monster, if we had to choose which Jack he was, well, I guess Jack's Knight would be the Jack of Spades, as he's adorned with the spade motif. However, he does have some diamonds on him as well, but since all of them have diamonds on, I think it's okay. Queen's Knight. Her flavor text reads, This knight catches her opponents off guard, dominating them with swift and deadly attacks. Continuing the trend of incorrect stats to match their rank in card games, the Queen playing card would be the second strongest face card. However, the Yu-Gi-Oh! version is actually the weakest of them, specifically in terms of attack. Though, she does make up for this by having the strongest defense of the three. And if we look at this monster's artwork, we see she faces to the right, which is significant because in a set of cards out of the four queens, diamonds, club, heart, and spade, the spade queen is the one out of all of them who faces in a different direction to the rest, typically to the right. So could this monster be the queen of spades? Well, we see in this monster's artwork, unlike the jack who is specifically the jack of spades, this monster is adorned with all the suits meaning Queen's Knight is the embodiment of all four suits. However, the fact that she has a spade upon her crown, I mean, I know there's a heart underneath it, but the spade seems to be the, the big one. I guess this could mean that she favors the spade suit. However, more likely, the fact that she wields all four suits on her armor means that she could potentially have the highest potential of the three knights, something that her upgraded form might embody. And outside of her own archetype, Queen's Knight has appeared in another series artwork, 
Specifically, she appeared as a silhouette in the artwork of Goddess Bo. And not only that, but all her traits were passed on to that monster too, as both of them are level 4 light warriors with 1500 attack and 1600 defense. The reason for this is because Goddess Bo was made through the union of Queen's Knight and the Claw of Hermos in the anime, thus their relation. King's Knight his effect is, when this card is normal summoned while you control Queen's Knight, you can special summon Jack's Knight from your deck. While the Jack was the strongest, the Queen was the weakest, the King uncomfortably sits in the middle in terms of both attack and defense. This is, of course, despite the fact that the King is the strongest of the three face cards in most card games. I guess the fact that he has an effect does make up for this, however, maybe it doesn't. Just like the Queen and Jack in real life, the King comes with some variations. For example, two of the Kings face in opposite directions to each other, and one of the Kings, specifically the King of Hearts, is the only one not to have a moustache. Or even the King of Diamonds, he's the only one to hold a different weapon to the rest. If we had to guess his suit, well, it's unclear in his original artwork. However, in the anime, he has spades on his knees, so he's the king of spades. Meaning that these three monsters are the Jack of Spades, the Queen of Spades, and the King of Spades. Now, all three of these monsters would appear in cards like Joker's Straight, Face Card Fusion, and Court of Cards. Not only that, but all three would receive an upgraded form, each of a different type of card. For example, Jack's Knight would evolve into the fusion monster, Arcana Knight Joker. His effect was, a fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above fusion materials. During either player's turn, when a spell or trap card effect or monster effect targets this face-up card, you can discard the same type of card, negate the effect. This card would get two different artworks, one close up and one far away. The far away one let you get a good look at the entirety of the monster's design, which is worth discussing as despite this monster being formed by fusing all three knights together, it appears that through the method of fusion, the Jack is the one to take control, and as such he wields the mightiest of attack, just like its base form. And while this card was never seen in the original anime, it did appear in the Yu-Gi-Oh! R manga, being summoned by Yugi in his duel against Yako Tenma. Then again, this monster did appear in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal anime, wielded by a duelist named Roku. He would summon this card against Yuma, and in fact defeat him with the very card with a perfect one-hit KO. Queen's Knight would get an evolved form, this time as an effect monster. She was known as Arcana Triumph Joker. Her effect was, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can send one of each, King's Knight, Queen's Knight, and Jack's Knight to the grave, special summon this card. This card gains 500 attack for each card in both players' hands. You can discard one card from your hand, destroy all cards on your opponent's field that match the discarded card's type. This card is the upgraded version of Queen's Knight, and is one of the cover cards for King's Court alongside Joker's Knight and Imperial Bower. It appears as if this monster has evolved to absorb the effect of Slife of the Sky Dragon, since the three knights were frequently used as tribute fodder for Slife of the Sky Dragon, it's only fitting that this monster would eventually learn how to increase its attack based on the number of cards in the hand, and even require three monsters for its summon, just like Slifer. Finally, King's Knight would evolve into the Link monster, Arcana Extra Joker, which required three warrior monsters with different names for its summon. Its effect was, once per turn, when a spell or trap or monster effect is activated that targets this face-up card or a monster this card points to, quick effect, you can discard the same type of card, monster spell or trap, negate the activation. When this Link summon card is destroyed by a battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one level four warrior normal monster from your deck, and if you do, add one level 4 warrior monster from your deck to your hand. I'm sure you've all noticed, but all three of these cards have similar abilities in terms of discarding a card of a certain type to stop or destroy that certain type. Now this card is the upgraded form of King's Knight, and shows that through Link summoning, the King takes center stage. Just like how Effect Tributing made the Queen in control, and Fusioning made the Jack in control. It's probably worth pointing out, but all three of these monsters have Joker in their name. However, none of these monsters are actually embodying the Joker, as that's the next card we're going to look at after this one. However, the name of Extra Joker seems to be a reference to how there are usually two Jokers in every pack of cards. Since this monster was the second to be released, this name made sense. However, now there's a third and fourth Joker, so... 
doesn't make as much sense as it used to. Outside of Jack, Queen, and King, two more monsters were added to this archetype. The first one was Joker's Knight, whose effect was you could send a Queen, King, or Jack's Knight from your deck to the grave to special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, this card's name becomes the sent monster's name until the end phase. During the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one other Light Warrior monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do, add this card to your hand. Though other cards in this archetype include Joker in their name, this monster is actually visually based on the Joker card. And as such, it serves as the wild card of the deck, as its ability allows it to absorb the names of the Queen, the King, and the Jack, and the perfect tribute fodder some of the other monsters. And it's not the only Joker. We also have Imperial Bower, whose effect is if you control no other monsters, you can tribute this card. Take two different monsters from your deck among Queen, King, and Jack's Knight, and either add them to your hand or special summon each monster. This card's name is based off an old game called Euchre, where Back then, the Jacks were referred to as a Bower and would serve as the most powerful card. Eventually, two cards would be added to a playing card deck based on the Bower. These would be the first Jokers to be printed, called Imperial Bowers. Slowly, they would be depicted in Jester type clothing and garner a new name of Joker. Each monster in this card's artwork uses a weapon based off their same coloured suits. The red one has a heart head spear with a diamond bottom, while the black one has a spade headed spear with a club bottom. And we might as well mention the one anime exclusive card that never got printed, Royal Straight Slasher. In the anime it couldn't be normal summoned or set. The only way to summon it was through special summoning with the effect of the spell card Royal Straight. And the monster's effect was that you could send 5 monsters from your deck to the grave to destroy all cards the opponent controlled. Based on the monster's name and effect, you can see that they are references to a Royal Straight Flush which is the best possible hand in poker. In fact, the Royal Straight spell actually depicts what this hand would look like. Joker's Straight. Discard one card, special summon one Queen's Knight from your deck, add one King's Knight or Jack's Knight from your deck to your hand. Then, immediately after the effect resolves, you can normal summon one monster. You cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of this turn, except Light Warrior Monsters. During the end phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Light Warrior Monster in your grave, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do, add this card to your hand. Face Card Fusion. Fusion summon one Light Warrior Fusion Monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials. If you control Queen's Knight, King's Knight, or Jack's Knight, you can use one monster from your deck as a fusion material. Thunder Speed Summon. During the main or battle phase, immediately after this effect resolves, normal summon one level 10 monster. If you control Queen, King, or Jack's Knight, you can apply this effect instead. Add one level 10 non-dark monster with mystery attack from your deck to your hand. Then, immediately after this effect resolves, you can normal summon one level 10 monster. And if you want to know, these are all the cards that this card can summon, and obviously Arcana Triumph Joker, Slifer, and the Winged Dragon of Ra are the main ones. Joker's Wild. During the main or battle phase, send one spell from your deck to the grave that specifically lists all of Queen, King, and Jack's Knight. This effect becomes that spell's effect when this card is activated. During the end phase, if this card is in your grave, you can target one Light Warrior monster in your graveyard, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do, add this card to your hand. And finally, Court of Cards. If you control no monsters, or only control Queen's Knight, King's Knight, or Jack's Knight, you can special summon one Queen, King, or Jack's Knight from your hand or graveyard. You can banish up to one each Queen, King, and Jack's Knight from your hand and or graveyard. Draw the same number of cards you banished. And with that, guys, that was a video on the Knights of Face. Before we go, I want to give a big thank you to someone called Tim Barbone, as he was the one who actually submitted the script for this video. I have changed it up quite a bit, but I do want to say thank you very much, Tim. For future reference, I don't normally make videos on scripts people submit but in this case I thought it was quite good so I gave it a go. So thank you once again Tim and before we go let's give a big shout out to the people that help make these videos possible. Thank you firstly of course to the Platinum Backers, Nemochan77, Geeks Cornucopia and Omar Lopez. Thank you for giving that little bit extra and supporting the channel I really appreciate it. As well to my YouTube and Gold Backers, Michael Wachlowski, Silver Defender, Goosey Q, Ignis Drasil, Joseph Y, Yu-Gi-Oh Everything, Jeremy Ponte, Kobe Salvaniaga, Queen Elizabeth Denise Leggin, and Colton Ritmanich. Thank you very much as well, my silver backers. Thank you all too. Catch you later.